hear me because it's deafening down here. You're looking at 4.7 billion gallons of nutrient-laden polluted water coming from Lake Okeechobee and other ag lands west of our county and north of the lake. 2013 may be nothing compared to what we're going to face this year, I'm afraid. The future of the Everglades and the future of Florida's fisheries rely on an immediate call to action. We need to fix this problem right now. If we don't take advantage of the crisis that's before us, we've missed this opportunity. The problem that we're facing is not a science problem. It's not an engineering problem. It's simply a political problem. Make sure you tell your Florida's elected officials to support Senate Bill 10 before it's too late. In uh, the 20s, late 20s, there was a hurricane and uh, the lake overflowed and quite a few people were killed and uh, it was decided that a great deal of flood protection was required. So they built a levee around Lake Okeechobee and choked off the river of grass. Historically, water would flow down the Kissimmee River into Lake Okeechobee. The lake would fill up, that water would spill over uh, into the river of grass all the way down to Florida Bay and the Florida Keys. Water in Lake Okeechobee has nowhere to go now, so when lake levels get too high, billions of gallons of polluted lake water are discharged to our estuaries, wreaking havoc on seagrass, oysters, and the fish populations that they support. They have to stop the freshwater flows into the Caloosahatchee River and St. Lucie River, uh, and that has to happen as soon as possible. The Everglades agricultural area south of Lake Okeechobee is standing in the way of meaningful restoration of the Everglades. The blame has been shifted back and forth for leakage, causing these big algal blooms and causing seagrass die-offs. We know, if we live here, and we see it, that we don't have massive algal blooms during dry years. We only have it when the lake is discharged. Not only do they control the lands and they control the water flow up there, but they control the politicians that control the water flow. And that's our only issue at this point, is political will. When do we come to the point that we decide to say, this area is worth keeping and saving? The Everglades is more than just a, you know, a wild place. It's the, you know, it's what provides fresh water for all of us in South Florida. There's not enough fresh water going through the Everglades into Florida Bay. That's resulted in salinity or salt content in the water that's so high that it's killed seagrass. There's been a lot of algae blooms in Florida Bay. I was not aware that water was being diverted from the Everglades and that the change of salinity was really having an impact on the ecosystem. It's sad, yeah. unfortunately, because you can go to a lot of places that should be just abundant with life. There's so many people that are unaware of what's going on to our, you know, our state. The Everglades ecosystem supports 1.3 million jobs and represents $109 billion towards Florida's economy through recreation and tourism. 20 million people now, 20 million people call Florida home. And they don't just come here for amusement parks or sunny weather. It's water, it's to go fishing, it's to go hunting, it's to experience uh, the, the rivers and estuaries and bays that make Florida great. Businesses are affected by bad water. People come here to fish, spend money on restaurants, lodging, everything in the world. South Florida's economy and Everglades watershed will die if we don't take care of the water. The reason I come down here is to fish. We would catch 30 snook and 30 redfish and all that grass and that now there's no grass and it's all ugly and nasty. That, that's a crime. How much money do you spend yearly to... Oh, to come down here? I, I come down, what, a couple times at least a year? I bet these trips cost, what, three, four thousand dollars a trip, at least. So if the Everglades wouldn't, you know, wasn't available for you to fish, you wouldn't, you wouldn't come down as much? Oh, no. No, not, not near as much. So, I mean, that's, love the Everglades. Coolest place in the world. My daughters, Anna, Allison, and Marley, love fishing in Flamingo. I was so happy to, to find out that they loved doing it. I was concerned they wouldn't. And I never imagined that we'd be in a situation where it just may not be here for them. It may not exist. And that's pretty devastating to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. The solution to this problem is the Everglades Restoration Plan and a critical project in that plan, a plan that brought Republicans and Democrats up together 16 years ago, calls for a reservoir to be built south of Lake Okeechobee so lake water can flow south, it can be stored, it then can be cleaned, and ultimately that water gets sent south 
down into the Everglades and to the Florida Keys. Joe Negron, our senator, is pushing it this year in 2017 legislative session. Can't wait another 10 years or 30 years or 40 years to start on this project. Uh, we have the money, we have the ability to buy the land, we have the science and the, and the, the ability to build the infrastructure to make it right. And we just don't have the willpower in Tallahassee to see it through. I've had a lot of memorable moments in the Everglades, ones that would never happen again if the Everglades wasn't to be around again. There's no other place like it in the world. And I feel other people think the exact same way. Just let yourself be known that you care. Care enough about that lovely place that we retreat from every weekend just to get a little bit of our sanity back. But if we don't act now, it won't be there for us. We're in this mess and we need to clean it up, plain and simple. Make sure to tell Florida's leaders to build an EAA reservoir. Text the word water to the number 52886 and save the Everglades. <laughs>